By now, it's no secret that Seoul has no shortage of trendy and beautiful cafes, but today I'm going to introduce to you five cafes in the northern Seoul region that you probably would never have thought to visit or even have heard about without this video. Let's get going! The first cafe on my list is in Eunpyeonggu. It's called YM Coffee House. I believe that this coffee house is created out of an old home, so they remodeled it into a cafe. Here they specialize in hand drip coffee, so let's go in and check it out. Coffee Project has been around for nine years, which is really impressive for Korean cafes, which tend to open and close crazy fast. Because it is a specialty in hand drip, it does take a while, so this is the kind of cafe you come to to relax and watch the process. And the coffee is really high grade, so you can choose your bean and also how strong you would like it to be. I chose strong, it's still very smooth. It did take about 25 minutes for it to come out, so like I said, plan to come here early. They open at 11.30 because it does fill up quite fast. And I know at this location they do offer a brewing class. When we leave the coffee shop, there's a few more stops we're gonna make to kind of show the Eunpyeonggu vibe. So when you come here, make sure you definitely stop for a coffee first. When visiting the neighborhoods of Eunpyeonggu, you can expect to enjoy a more calm and quiet atmosphere where you can visit temples, take walks on different paths, and of course visit the infamous Hanuk village, which has become more popular within the last few years, as it is a newly built village. It is a residential zone, so please be aware of that and be respectful, but it's very welcome to tourists. There's even a CU and a Tusum place, as well as other shops, cafes, and vendors around, and so many people like to come and take pictures among the mountains and the beautiful homes. Today we are in Dobonggu, so we're at Dobong Station walking to our next cafe. This cafe is actually in between Dobong Station and Dobong San Station. We usually go to Dobong San Station to go hiking in the Bukhansan National Park, but it's super beautiful over here. We can keep getting shots of the mountain. The cafe we're visiting today is called Yuyong Chongwon. I think they opened in 2023. It's a cafe that opens by 8 a.m., which is really rare in Korea unless it's a chain cafe. The baker goes in at 5 a.m. I'm really excited to try the cronut. They also offer things like pecan pie and salt bread, so we'll have a look at what they got today. Unfortunately, the cronut seems to already be sold out for today. It looks really good, though. I ordered the vanilla bean latte, and Sunghun got the mugwort latte, and he really likes his, and I like my drink. This cafe is really spacious on the inside and it's got this very like woodsy, relaxing interior. I always appreciate a cafe that mixes different kinds of chairs and tables. If you're somebody who is going to be traveling long term in Korea, or maybe you're just more relaxed, easygoing kind of vibe person, then definitely check out northern parts of Seoul because it's just gonna be way quieter. You can actually sit down and enjoy your coffee. We took a walk through the North Seoul Dream Forest to come to Mue, which is a French artisanal bakery cafe. The owner of Mue studied under a pretty well-renowned French baker. He studied under him for about a year and then opened his own bakery cafe in 2019. So we came here and got two sweet things and one plain thing to try. Every day is different, so what we got today might not be available tomorrow. We got like an apricot pastry, a chocolate, and it's just a plain croissant, and everything was delicious. I also got a flat white. I usually get the iced peach Americano on a hot day, but it's really sweet, so since we got two sweet pastries, I opted for something a little more bitter. Their drink menu is very extensive, so if you're not a coffee drinker, there are other options. We did get three baked goods and one drink, and it ended up costing 25,000 won, which I believe is about 19 or 20 USD. So it is quite pricey, like for the quality and for just how beautiful and how much effort goes into these pastries. I think it's well worth the price. 
we just don't come here very often because it is expensive. So we come here maybe once a month. They take a lot of pride in the ingredients that they use. They mention specifically that the ingredients they use are very natural and there's no additives so it's safe for babies too. They specifically mention babies so I think that they are like really family oriented people. It's also a dog friendly cafe so you can come out and sit outside with your dog or go to the third floor. Second floor is not dog friendly. The interior is a bit eclectic. Different colors, different types of seating. It's cute but I would say it's not the most comfortable seating. We like to go to the third floor and look outside. The view is super cute of the surrounding neighborhood. And I recommend just walking over to the forest and enjoying it over there. There's been many times where I've been in one of the more touristy areas and I've come across a really cute bakery that puts a lot of effort into its signage and displaying its products. And then I buy it and I'm like, why is this one sweet when it should be savory or why is this one savory when it should be sweet it's just very confusing it's not great quality so i really love bakeries such as Mue that really focus on the quality over quantity they're focusing on select flavors for each day and they're putting a lot of time and effort into those rather than just mass producing 50 different products to make it look cute the bakers will put their diplomas up to say where they learned from so if you're looking for some really good bakery in seoul just keep an eye out for that. We're back in Songbukgu, and this is actually our old neighborhood area, so I'm a little biased, but Mobler is a personal favorite of mine. The owner is super kind, and back when I moved here in 2019, Mobler was already here. It's been around for a good while. The coffee that he brews is very light, so I like to get the drip coffee or just an iced Americano usually, because he also has financier. Is that how you pronounce it? Financier. Financier. Financier? Financier. I'm just going to be American about it. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but he bakes in-house financiers of different flavors and he's expanded the selection he's been playing around a bit with it he's got yuja he's got jeju matcha which has become a new favorite of mine i also really like the raspberry pistachio i usually just get the light hand drip to go with it because it balances out the sweetness really nicely and the cafe itself is like it's very small cozy it's a place where you go to chat with your friends and a lot of people come in and out to get takeout so there's only like four tables, not many people sit in. It's just a neighborhood favorite, it's a gem. It's not in the main shopping area or anything. I just really enjoy going there and sitting in for an hour or two, reading a book, having my coffee, and then coming out to the river for a walk or a picnic like we're doing right now with Gimbap. Very nostalgic for me. I really love Mobler, recommend it. I think it's a staple of the Sanction neighborhood. Excellent representation of what there is in some local for coffee. The fifth and final cafe that we're visiting is called Mandoli Cafe and it's in Gangbukgu. So this cafe has been around since 2015 and I've been here before with one of my best friends. They offer a small list of coffee drinks as well as smoothies, juices, and even highballs at night. And they also make in-house ciabatta for sandwiches. They have fast cheesecakes, tiramisu, canole orange and vanilla flavors, everything made in-house, and it's delicious. This is my second time here, this is Simon's first time, and he has declared this to be his favorite cafe out of the bunch. But it is located in a very small, quiet neighborhood. There's not very much to do around this specific area. I'm including this cafe because it is part of the North Seoul area, and also I just really am impressed they make everything in-house. The coffee menu is small but delicious, and the prices are super reasonable. That avocado sandwich platter we got was 8,000 won, which is unheard of. If this cafe was anywhere else, it would probably be at least 15,000 won. The interior of the cafe is very classic style. It's got like the wood flooring, it's got the old furniture. To add to the atmosphere of the interior, they have a very classic playlist. Your jazz Frank Sinatra vibes here, so you really do feel transported into another time. For me, it really just reminds me of my grandparents' house. It's very homey, I would say. There's also an outdoor area where we're sitting now. There's a large table. If you come with a group of friends or family, you can fit like 
eight people. I'm excited to come back here in the winter. They have a basket of blankets available for comfortable seating and it is dog friendly. I have to double check, but I think every cafe we've been to is technically dog friendly, so that's cool. That was just coincidence. We're definitely coming back. I think Simulun already wants to come back next weekend. Actually, this might be one of my favorite cafes. These are just a few of my favorite cafes to visit in North Seoul. Which one of the five will you be adding to your list? If you made it this far, thanks for watching and hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.